In this video, we're going to take a look at the maze game. And what I have on my screen is the maze game with all the sprites. It's going to include a person, dynamite, uh, player, rings, holes, uh, lives, monsters, all sorts of different things. When you play it, it's going to look something like this. We'll put a title screen uh, with instructions and you move around uh, the maze and uh, try to get to the next room and complete all the different rooms, watching out for monsters that are gonna get in the way and watching out for uh, all sorts of other different things. So to get started to build this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by making a sprite. Uh, the first sprite is gonna be called Sprite Person. And we're gonna load the sprite from the folder game maker maze game and in the resources where all the resources are uh we'll find the teddy bear which is the person now you're going to see later on we're going to use the nice person but for starting off and being simple we're just going to use the regular person um we're also going to need a wall so uh, I'm going to uncheck precision collision checking and I'm going to make the full image, uh, the bounding box and transparent. The wall, of course, same thing. We'll give it a name of a wall and we'll load that sprite of the wall. And of course, I'll make it full image and it's not going to be transparent because we're going to see it. Okay, so let's turn those two sprites into uh, and place them onto two objects of uh, similar names. So I've got object person and it's gonna have a person uh, sprite attached to it. And I'm gonna make another object called a wall. And it's going to have a wall sprite attached to it. Now the wall, uh, just like the other game, doesn't really do a lot it just needs to uh, sit there. So what we're going to do is it's going to be solid. So I put a check mark on solid and it, that's gonna make it impossible for other objects to penetrate it. Um, and the wall object does nothing else. It just sits there. The person object though has quite a few different things and it's a little bit trickier. What the person object does uh, that's important is the person object is going to need to move. And the arrow keys up, down, left, and right are going to be the motion. To stop, when the player releases a key, we're going to use a keyboard event for no key uh, so it stops. There's one complication though. We want to keep the person aligned with the cells of the grid that form the maze. So for example, in my room, let me start by uh, starting to design my room and I'm gonna change the grid to be a 32 by 32 because my wall and my person are that size. And let me stick a person on here. So I want the person to be able to move, oops, to move well uh, without hitting the walls. And so you'll see there's a grid. And so if I want the person to be able to go down and turn this corner easily, I've got to make sure that when I stop, I don't stop when the person is right where my cursor is, halfway between two um, blocks. The per I want the person to stop when they're right here, for example. Oops. Uh, I want the person to stop when they're right here, for example. So the person's going to start here and maybe walk down and when they let go of the mouse here, it's gonna stop uh, so that when they press the right key, it's gonna go here. So that's gonna be a bit tricky. So how are we going to uh, do that? And I'll show you how we're going to do that. So in the event of keyboard left, easy enough, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, move left at a speed of four, but Here's, here's the problem. What I want to do is I want it to be in a grid. So if I press the left key, I don't want it to start moving left unless, um, let's, let's move the person here. 
I don't want it to move less left unless it's right here inside a grid or even right here inside a grid. If the person was halfway up, um, I don't want them to be able to move left. So what I do uh, to fix that, and this is super important, you really have to follow this, so I'll, I'll try to go slow here, is we go to main, uh, sorry, control, and we put this check grid, octagonal sign above it. And what we can do is we can say a grid of a 32, remember I changed the grid to 32 by 32 to fit the sprite. So if it's in the grid, perfectly in the grid, if, it's, if the instance is aligned with a grid and I press the left on that event, then move left. So this way it won't move left unless you're exactly in the grid and that's really important. I'm gonna do the same thing for moving right. So let's, uh, let's just go through that again. So if I am right, if I'm perfectly in the grid, start moving to the right at a speed of four. Left. Uh, move left at a speed of four if and only if your instance is in the grid. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for uh, keyboard up. So if I press the up key, I'll put, I'll drag in here. If it's in the grid, uh, move up at a speed of four. And if it's in keyboard down uh, and you're in the grid, move down at a speed of four. And finally, the last one is if keyboard no key is pressed. If no key is pressed, if you're in the grid, so if no key is pressed and you're in the grid, I want you to move stopped at a speed of four. So I want you to stop. But don't stop if you're not in the grid. So let me just uh, press play here and see if you can see what's going on and uh, see if you can finish the movement for that. Then there's one last thing I wanna do is uh, add a flag and uh, we're ready to make a couple of rooms. So here we go, I move here and as I move and let go of the key, it stops. Let go of the key, it stops. So I move up, let go of the key, it stops. So it still kept moving until it was lined in the grid and when I move left, it doesn't move left unless I'm in the grid. So. If I'm not in the grid, it won't move left and, and it makes the play work really well. Okay, last thing I wanna do is make a goal. So I'm gonna make a sprite for a goal and for this one, the goal is going to be a flag and I make an object for the goal and what we're gonna do for the goal object, which is gonna be the last thing we're gonna do is the goal is gonna collide with the person. And if I collide with the person, um, it's really quite simple what we're going to do. So does the goal move? No, the goal stands still. Really the person is uh, gonna hit the goal. But to make it easy, um, I could put it in the person event or I could put it in the goal event. I'm just gonna put this in the goal event. So in the goal event, I'm gonna have a collision with the person. So if the goal and the person collide, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna check what room we're in. And I do that by bringing this other octagonal um, thing that says check to see if a next room exists. So I drag that. You'll notice that the octagonal ones ask questions. So if the next room exists, in this case here, I'm gonna go to the next room exist. And I can put a transition if I want. It just uh, adds a graphic effect. So if there's a next room, go to the next room. If there's not, and I'll go to control and drag the else symbol, that means that's not true. Um, then I'm gonna go here to uh, um, main two and I'll just restart the game. So now I've got a flag object. I'll finish uh, this room up and make a fun maze that I have to figure out. So I'll do that by putting all sorts of interesting um, designs to it. So you can have fun uh, building that uh, as you would like and so forth. I'm not gonna take too much time here. Um, and I'll put a flag. Let me finish this room up. Uh, let me put a flag right here just to test it. Uh, and then I'm gonna make another room. So I'm gonna uh, right click and create another room 
and of course make it 32 by 32 and I'll just put a goal a person and a wall and I'll fill it in later and finish it but let's just test it out and hopefully um, it'll work so far the movement is working I know and also uh, with a little luck the flag will work and we'll collide with the flag and go to room two so let's just test it out perfect it works great and I go to the next room and voila uh, it worked 